Welcome back to History Class with Dr. W and our study of the year 1968. In the previous lecture, we began talking about the presidential election process and the Democratic primaries. We talked about the rising and falling of various candidates in the early months of 1968, beginning with the surprising rise of Eugene McCarthy, the equally surprising fall of Lyndon Johnson, and the powerful campaign of Robert Kennedy, which ended tragically in his assassination. We'll pick up the story now by talking about the, the man who ultimately wins the Democratic nomination in 1968, Hubert Humphrey. Hubert Humphrey was born and raised in small town South Dakota. He was a child of the Great Depression, and his family, and particularly his father, struggled to keep food on the table and keep them uh, functioning as a family. He was a drugstore clerk and eventually drugstore owner in small town South Dakota, and this business was certainly subject to the rising and falling of the Depression economy. As such, eventually Hubert uh, left the small town and opened a larger um, drugstore in a slightly bigger town in South Dakota, and then went on to study at the University of Minnesota, where he earned a pharmacist license uh, from Drew College Pharmacy in Denver, Colorado. And throughout the Depression years, he worked as a pharmacist, helping his father in the family drugstore. Eventually, Hubert returned to school. He had bigger dreams than being uh, simply a pharmacist. He went to the University of Minnesota, earned a master's degree from LSU, Louisiana State, and began work on a PhD before launching a career in politics. During the war years, Humphrey was physically unable to join the armed forces and worked in a number of uh, capacities during the war and also as a college instructor. He joined the ranks of local politics, running for mayor of Minneapolis in 1943, and though he didn't run, he became a key player in uh, Minnesota politics during that time. He was a founding member of the Democratic Farmer Labor Party, and yet also became an outspoken anti-communist during this time, and so he became uh, one of the sort of rare liberal anti-communists of that era. Ultimately, he won the mayorship of Minneapolis in 1945 and worked hard in his role as mayor to struggle against racism uh, in Minneapolis and combating bigotry in all its forms. In 1948, Humphrey made a national reputation for himself at the Democratic National Convention, where Harry Truman was campaigning for re-election. Truman had announced a civil rights platform at the time, but Humphrey argued that it needed to be even more aggressive. And during this speech at the convention, he said, to those who say that we are rushing this issue of civil rights, I say to them we are 172 years too late to those who say this civil rights program is an infringement on states' rights, I say this, the time has arrived in America for the Democratic Party to get out of the shadow of states' rights and walk forthrightly into the bright sunshine of human rights. It was a stirring speech and won him a great following not only at the convention, but in the aftermath as well. And I should note that the support that Humphrey garnered from that speech led in part to the fracturing of the party and the creation of the so-called Dixiecrats. It was after that convention in 1948 that many Southern Democrats splintered off to form the, the so-called Dixiecrats and support South Carolina Governor Strom Thurmond in the election of 1948. In that same election, 1948, Humphrey was elected to the U.S. Senate and ultimately re-elected again in 1954 and 1960. In the Senate, he became renowned as a champion of many liberal causes, like civil rights, arms control, the control of nuclear weapons, food stamps, humanitarianism, and so on. He was a popular speaker in the Senate as well. He was one of the champions of the Civil Rights Act in 1964, 
and his consistent, positive, and upbeat attitude earned him the nickname the Happy Warrior in the Senate. Humphrey announced campaigns for the presidency twice before 1964. In 1952 and 1960, failing to win the nomination on both occasions. In 1964, Lyndon Johnson, who was of course the candidate for presidency on the Democratic side, had a number of possibilities to choose for his vice presidential running mate and eventually settled on Humphrey. Uh, another of those candidates was Eugene McCarthy, who I just talked about. The LBJ Humphrey ticket won a sweeping landslide victory in the 1964 election. As vice president, Humphrey made clear his absolute loyalty to Johnson and his program. Despite the fact that particularly on the issue of the Vietnam War, Johnson's popularity in the country was sliding, and especially as we approach the late 1960s. There were many liberals in Congress and supporters around the country who faulted Humphrey for failing to criticize Johnson, even as the Vietnam War became immensely unpopular after the Tet Offensive. This shift in thinking on Humphrey was the subject of a satirical song by the musician Tom Lehrer, which was called, Whatever Became of Hubert? Among the lines in the song were, I wonder how many people here tonight remember Hubert Humphrey. He used to be a senator. Whatever became of Hubert? Has anyone heard a thing? Once he's shown on his own. Now he sits home alone and waits for the phone to ring. Once a fiery liberal spirit. Ah, but now when he speaks, he must clear it. As a staunch supporter of Lyndon Johnson, Humphrey, of course, intended to support Johnson in his re-election campaign and presumably remain the vice president himself. But after Johnson's bombshell announcement that he would not run for re-election, Humphrey rethought his own position and eventually announced his own candidacy in April of 1968. As I've noted previously, we were already well along the road of the primary process, and Hubert Humphrey no longer had time to put his name in the ring for the primaries, so he was relying on winning support at the convention itself and winning those votes. But as Johnson's kind of stand-in in in this election, he did have the support of much of the core of the Democratic Party. So Democrats who still supported Lyndon Johnson tended to support Humphrey during this process. And he had much support at the local level from mayors and state politicians, labor unions, and many core Democrats. So again, just to summarize the the kind of whirlwind process behind the Democratic primaries in the first half of 1968, early on, Eugene McCarthy had some surprising successes, most notably in New Hampshire. Lyndon Johnson, in the aftermath of that, announcing his uh, shocking decision not to run for re-election. Robert Kennedy joins the race and immediately has... Uh, vast momentum behind his campaign. McCarthy and Kennedy kind of duke it out for a few months there, culminating in the California primary, which was won by Robert Kennedy. It feels like he's got the momentum heading towards the convention, and then he is assassinated. And so again, things are thrown up in the air. So in the aftermath of Kennedy's assassination, The race was once again thrown into disarray. Uh, Hubert Humphrey now was clearly the leading candidate. Again, he was the establishment candidate and had much support from the core of the party. Um, But obviously the anti-war wing of the Democratic Party, which was growing, didn't support Humphrey um, because he was, again, a staunch supporter of Johnson and of the war itself. So some of Kennedy's supporters cast in their lot with Humphrey. Some of them uh, went over to Eugene McCarthy, who had been Kennedy's rival again early in the year. He was now the the most prominent anti-war candidate. But then others found a different candidate, yet another, to join the race, uh, Senator George McGovern from South Dakota, who was also an anti-war candidate. And so provided uh, another option. He had been a staunch supporter 
of Robert Kennedy um, and of Kennedy's campaign. And so many of the Democrats who supported Robert Kennedy then swung over to George McGovern in the aftermath. By the time of the Democratic National Convention in Chicago in August of 1968, Hubert Humphrey had taken firm command of the race. Eugene McCarthy had faded after Kennedy um, joined the race. As I mentioned, Kennedy's assassination kind of threw that group of supporters in a variety of different directions. And Hubert Humphrey always had the kind of core support of the establishment of the Democratic Party, including and notably the mayor of Chicago, Richard Daley, who uh, largely organized the Democratic Convention in his hometown. Now, we will be talking much more later about the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. It is the scene of one of the most notorious episodes of the year 1968, uh, when huge crowds of protesters gather outside of the convention hall and in the parks and in the streets of Chicago, and then Chicago's police, at the bidding of Richard Daley, uh, attack the protesters and are bloodied in the streets in the midst of the Democratic National Convention. So we're starting to get a little bit ahead of ourselves. These are events in August. We will revisit the presidential election, the Democratic Convention. We'll talk about the Republican side of things and other events uh, regarding the election when we get a little bit further on into the... <laughs>